It's time for Morning Today with Jonathan Mark on AM 1480 WLEA. And once again, thank you, Mr. Paul Harvey. And right as usual, it is Friday. Finally, Friday. The end of a kind of a weird week. Uh, yeah, it certainly was. But it is Friday and just one more day and we have the weekend. Isn't that nice? You know, Brian, you had a story uh, on your news there about... Uh, some scammer calling, uh, Allegheny, uh, alleging to be from the Allegheny County Office for the Aging? Yes. So how, how are they demanding money? I mean, Calling up people and, and demanding money apparently is some, what some scam artists are doing. Wow. Boy, some people will do anything. You know that? I mean, really? So, yeah, uh, if you get a call purporting to be for the, from the Allegheny County Office for the Aging and demanding money, it's, it's a scam. Of course, a new scam every day. A new day, a new scam. But people will try anything. Uh, let me see. What's... Oh, this weekend, that's right. The Battle of Lanes Mill. Boy, oh boy. If you've never been to a Civil War reenactment, I, tr trust me, you will have fun. If you've never seen one, uh, they are so much fun. These guys and women who were into uh, reenacting a Civil War uh, battles are so into it i mean everything everything is authentic the arms the uniforms the costumes uh the the food the um the, uh, just everything everything is authentic these guys are really into it and it's going to be uh, let me see a uh, lane um hmm, on the lane road between hornell and canisteo and uh it starts i think uh activities start monday or monday <laughs> It has been a long week. Uh, activity starts Saturday and Sunday at 9.30. And it goes until, well, I don't know. I guess until it's dark or something. And or they have a thing today. Uh, I think for this students. is invite only for students. Yeah, it's called Educational Day. And boy, you know, you see you see this stuff. You read about it in books, right? But you, you actually see these, the, these, these weapons and the uniforms and the, the, the cannon, uh, all that. I mean, it is... It brings history to life. It really does. You know, you could read about it in a book or you can see this stuff and put your hands on it. You know, it makes it real. I think it's a great idea. And as I said, these reenactors are seriously into what, what they do. And there's going to be uh, more than 50 or 60 or something. There's going to be a lot of people there. And uh, when I lived in California, I was into reenacting too, only not the, the Civil War, the Revolutionary War. I was seriously into black powder in California, and uh, which was kind of odd because I mean, there's a, there's California. He's a Revolutionary War. A little there weren't too many people into the Revolutionary War in California. Yeah, more of a Massachusetts, New York y type thing. Yeah. New Jersey, Virginia, and all that. Uh, but anyway, um, yeah, and I was so into it. Black powder. I I don't know how many guns I had. Wow, I've sold them all, so so, so they're they're all gone. But uh, did man, you have it, a character was... who you played? Did you have a real life? No, not a real life character, but it was sort of based on real life. He was uh, what was he again? He was a trapper. He was a trapper, and I had oh man, I... <laughs> boy, it was a long time ago. Did you do uh, the white wig? No, I didn't do the white wig. I had blonde hair. At that time, it was blonde. <laughs> it's not blonde anymore. Now it's kind of gray. Uh, but no. So I had the, the uh, a tricorn hat. Okay. I, I mean, the whole thing. And it was so much fun. I had, I don't know how many guns I had. I had a brown best. The brown best is pretty heavy. It's it's wow. a long and heavy gun, you know. You know and what they have down in Canada? We can hear them right up here on Ashball Hills, those we, cannons. We can do, we can too, in Almond. Really? Yeah, in Almond. So two years ago, we had somebody visiting us, and all of a sudden, around 1.30, 1 o'clock in the afternoon, you hear, boom! Kaboom, yeah. <laughs> and this woman goes, what in the world was that? I said, oh, yeah, that's right. They're reenacting the Battle of Lanes Mills. And, uh, yeah, it's certainly worth your while. It is certainly worth your while. They'll give the demonstrations. Uh, you can ask all kinds of questions. As I said, these people are seriously into what they're doing. So they know about the, the uh, Civil War. And... Uh, Oh, yeah, it's it's great. If you've never gone, go. I guarantee you will really enjoy it. Now, uh, 
I got this from, uh, let me see, where did I find this one? Hmm. Oh, NPR. That's right. As I said, I will go anywhere, even NPR in a pinch. It says, and the headline is, Immigrant Driver's License Bill Gets a Boost. Which isn't exactly accurate immigrant driver's license bill. It's more like undocumented immigrants license bill. So that puts a finer point on it, I think. And uh, it says uh, a leading business group has come out in favor of granting driver's licenses to undocumented immigrants, increasing the chances of the bill's passage in the state legislature this year. Heather Bruschetti, president of the Business Council, said instituting the policy of issuing New York State driver's licenses to undocumented immigrants will make the roads safer and help businesses that are seeking workers during a labor shortage. And um, maybe the labor shortage, but as far as making the roads safer, I don't know exactly how that would work. I mean, if you're a bad driver, you're a bad driver. You know what I mean? But anyway, she claims it'll make the roads safer. She says, our immigration system is broken. This does not fix it, but what it does is it gives undocumented immigrants the opportunity to sit for a test. Wow, boy, that, that'll be fun. Uh, to get licensed, to get on the road, and to have insurance, she said, so that when they're driving in New York, they will be covered. That still doesn't make the roads any safer, but anyway. Uh, the Business Council's membership includes most major upstate businesses, including Corning and Eastman Kodak. And she says her group support might help provide cover for upstate Democrats who may be on the fence over the issue. She says, I hope so. I think there's really easy, valid reason to do this. And she was joined by the sponsors of the builds. It says builds, plural. Okay, well, there's one of the Assembly and the one of the Senate. That's right. Assemblyman Marcos Crespos and Senator Luis Sepulveda. Crespo said the bill has been amended to make it easier for law enforcement to seek DMV records of the immigrants if they're pulled over for traffic infractions. It was never the intention to interfere with local law enforcement's common practice to enforce traffic laws, he said. Opponents of the bill, including some county clerks, say granting driver's licenses to undocumented immigrants diminishes the value of the document to legal residents. It could lead to criminals taking advantage of the system and even open a back door to guess what? Voting. Illegal voting. That's right. Mm hmm Okay. Some county clerks have said they would not grant the licenses if the bill became law. Sepulveda said those accusations have been disproven. And he said if the clerks refuse to grant the licenses, they should be removed from office. The governor, he says, uh, the governor has within the constitutional powers given to him the right to remove a county clerk that doesn't follow the law adding that uh, he's introduced legislation to explicitly allow the governor to remove a county clerk under those circumstances. And Lieutenant Governor Kathy Hochul was Erie County Clerk 12 years ago when former Governor Elliot Spitzer, remember him, proposed a similar measure. At the time, Hochul said she would turn over any applicants for the license to immigration authorities. But now she backs granting the licenses. Huh. The bill's sponsor said Hochul's reversal on the issue helps their cause. And Senate Leader uh, Andrea Stewart-Cousins said the new support could help the measure's chances, but she would not guarantee a vote in the Senate right now. So, there we have it. Uh, licenses for illegal immigrants? I don't know. I mean, is that a good idea? I don't know about that. Uh, okay, then we have something else from Albany here. Do, do you have a pet, cat, dog, or something like that? Everybody has a cat or dog or something. Maybe, uh, well, hamsters are normally kept inside. But anyway, if they're an outdoor animal, such as a dog or a cat, you know that extreme weather is bad for them. It's really hot or it's really cold. But now, Albany will make you do the right thing. Okay? And the headline is, it's from the Times Union, the Albany Times Union. Legislation proposes pets be brought inside during extreme weather. Okay? Just in case you, you didn't know that. New Yorkers could soon have their pets seized if they're left outside during extreme weather. The proposal would expand existing requirements that outdoor pets have appropriate shelters by creating a state alert system to notify New Yorkers when it's no longer safe to keep their pets outdoors. See, this, the state will tell you when it's, it's, it's extreme weather, see, because you don't know that, right, apparently. I don't know. Uh, the language also applies to pets inside a vehicle without proper ventilation or protection from the weather. The measure would apply only to, quote, companion animals 
which state law defines as a dog or cat and any other domesticated animal normally kept in the house. The definition excludes farm animals, which is probably a good thing, because who would want a horse in the house or a cow? That really wouldn't work, I don't think. And, uh, you know, it, it is a good idea to <laughs> taking care of your... Why would you have a pet if you didn't take care of it? I mean, why would, why would you have a pet if you, if you don't want to t- take care of it? You would know if it's too cold, and you would know if it's too hot, right? Anyway, so the state was going to start enforcing that. Let me see. What are the chances of this thing passing? Uh, the legislation has yet to move into state assembly. So, anyway, this is in the Senate. So, let me see. The weather restrictions would kick in at 25 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, wind chill factor of zero or above, I think, 100 degrees or something. Now, I have, do you have a husky? Huskies love cold weather. I mean, they love it. They thrive in it. The colder, the better. So, Speaking a husky, of weather. Oh, are we really? Already? He's with us. Oh, well, hey, would this be Rob Carolyn? It would be, John. How are you this morning? Oh, just fine. Absolutely fine. So, how are we looking weather-wise? I hope it's going to be a nice weekend because we have a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, it's not going to be a nice weekend, unfortunately. Uh-oh. Uh, we continue the pattern that we've had all spring long with uh, showers and thunderstorms being an issue. Uh, we still can't break out of the pattern, John. The jet stream remains further south than normal. In fact, uh, later today we're going to see an evident sign of what the jet's doing. Uh, there are some significant wildfires burning across the central part of Canada. Uh, the jet stream has picked up some of that smoke, sent mm. it southward into the country, and now is moving it east across the nation. So we've got a plume of smoke stretching from the Dakotas this morning into northern parts of uh, uh, Missouri, then across the Chicago area and right into western and northern New York. And it looks like during the day some of this is going to settle over us. So even though we're going to get rid of some of the cloudiness, uh, the sky is going to kind of look very hazy today. Uh, so kind of an unusual phenomenon. On, but we had problems with the fires in the same part of Canada last year. Uh, they've been struck by this uh, beetle that's killed vast groves of pines, and now that they're dead, they're having the tendency to burn. So we'll see sunshine develop today, but the sky is going to have a milky quality. It's going to be mild today, 70 to 75. Next disturbance headed our ways, dropping through Lake Superior this morning. That will head our way for tonight. We'll cloud up 50 to 55. Won't rain all day tomorrow, but there will be some showers and thunderstorms around as that disturbance comes through. It'll be 75 to 80. Showers, thunderstorms tomorrow night, 55 to 60. Showers and thunderstorms on Sunday as well, turning cooler, 65 to 70. And we're going to clear things out on Monday, Jonathan, but it's going to feel like a fall day. Lots of sunshine developing, breezy, maybe an afternoon shower, and temperatures struggling to get to 60 to 65. Unbelievable. Oh, actually, it, it isn't because it's very d- believable this year. Wow, yeah, that's we've just had this. Yep, the jet stream just is not migrating northward up into Canada like it should be, and until it does, uh, we're going to continue with a pattern more suited for a fall rather than spring. <laughs> I love it. Thanks, Rob, I think. See you you got it, sir. Yeah, okay, bye. From the Fox Sports Studios in Los Angeles. Here's Eddie Garcia. Game one of the NBA Finals in the books, and the star of game one, likely not who you might have expected. Siakam backs in near side, left wing. Kick up top to Lowry. Back to Siakam. Drives, hook shot in the lane. Good! Banked it up and in. 30 for Siakam. Golf from the Raptors Radio Network, 118-109 Toronto with the win over Golden State. Behind Pascal Siakam's playoff career high, 32 points. He was 14 of 17 shooting from the field. Kawhi Leonard chipped in with 23 points in the win for Toronto. For Golden State in the loss, Steph Curry had 34 points, Klay Thompson 21 points, and Draymond Green a triple-double, but not enough. Raptors have won five in a row this playoffs and are now 3-0 head-to-head against Golden State this season. Toronto with a 1-0 series lead. Game 2 is Sunday in Toronto. Baseball games of note, Rays pound the Twins 14-3. Tampa Bay's a half game out in the AL East. Brewers over the Pirates 11-5. Milwaukee's a half game back in the NL Central. 
New to golf or seasoned veteran? You'll enjoy the casual, relaxed atmosphere of Vanderview Golf Course. Two miles from downtown Alfred on Waterwells Road, Vanderview is a nine-hole, executive-length golf course with a driving range on one side of the road and the course on the other. Family-friendly and fun recreation for everyone. Greens fees are one price for unlimited play, $9.50. High school students, only $5. Children, 12 and under, with an adult no charge you can play up to 18 holes or nine holes with a cart and get the second nine holes at no additional charge ladies and senior golfers who don't hit the long ball vanderview's got the executive length that's just right for your game and new this year a season pass for only 100 dollars. that's a lot of golfing fun for a very little bit of money vanderview golf course two miles from downtown alfred on waterwells road vanderview golf course From the Fox Business Network, stock futures are sharply lower after President Trump announced new tariffs against all products imported from Mexico. Uber lost more than a billion dollars in its spring quarter, but investors are encouraged by Uber seeing signs its price war with competitors is easing. Uber didn't release a formal prediction for its business this year, but sees signs of improvement. Its loss is attributed mostly to sales and marketing expenses and promotions, in other words, discounts to customers. KFC is looking into a plant-based chicken substitute. Its head of U.S. operations, Kevin Hockman, tells USA Today he has meetings scheduled with several major suppliers to learn more about plant-based meats. Hockman says they need to figure out if plant-based chicken is as popular as it seems beef will be. With the Fox Business Report, I'm Ginny Cosola. Prescription products require an online physician consultation and are only available if the physician determines a prescription is appropriate. See website for full details. Hey guys, good news. The expensive little blue pill is now generic, which means you can get the prescription medication to treat ED at affordable prices. And now get your first month supply for just $5 at 4 slash Chris. Hims connects you with real doctors online who can prescribe the medication. And a pharmacy sends it right to your door. So easy. To get your first order for just 5 bucks, you need to go to 4 slash Chris. That's 4 slash Chris. Today at Simmons Rockwell Nissan in Horseheads and Hornell, drive away in a new Nissan Rogue lease for only $2.19 a month. A new 2019 all-wheel drive Nissan Rogue SV model with 17-inch alloys, heated power seat, and remote start. Lease for $219 a month for 36 months. Only $2,500 cash or trade. Tax and DMV fees are due at signing. Shop Simmons-Rockwell.com. Davidson's Furniture. Hi, this is Mike Davidson of Davidson's Furniture, and our Memorial Day sale means store-wide savings on all our brand names, like Lazy Boy, Broyhill, and Serta. Plus, qualified buyers can have 18 months interest-free financing on any purchase. We have recliners from $299 and Lazy Boy reclining sofas from $899. Serta mattresses and choice of size, firmness, and comfort are all on sale. Don't miss out on Davidson Furniture's Memorial Day sale. We're open Memorial Day Monday from 10 to 4. And we are back. Now, did she say a plant-based chicken substitute? She did. Something like that? On the business report or something, uh, uh, the KFC, I think, a plant-based chicken, that's unnatural. I mean, it's either chicken or it's not. I don't know. Okay, fine. Oh, speaking of chicken, this is kind of interesting. Remember a couple of weeks ago, let me see, uh, hmm, when was it? A couple of weeks ago. Chick-fil-A was in the, the uh, news because they've been banned from the Buffalo Niagara Airport. Not because of the food, not because of the restaurant, not because of the employees, not, not because of the service, but because of the personally held religious views of the chain's owner. And that's why they've been banned from the Buffalo Niagara Airport. Well, it turns out that the FAA is investigating investigating because it would be religious discrimination. So there you go. Chick-fil-A might wind up in the Buffalo Niagara Airport. And speaking of which, you know, this was only posted yesterday, and I'm I'm surprised it wasn't posted earlier this week because it would have been a little more timely. But Chick-fil-A, uh, over the weekend, this Memorial Day weekend, 
It says here, this is from USA Today. It's too bad it was only posted recently. I, I would have had it Monday or Tuesday. But it's still worth mentioning. At many Chick-fil-A restaurants around the country, one seat was empty over the weekend to honor soldiers who died while serving in the armed forces. The fast food chain set up a missing man table at many locations for the Memorial Day weekend. A missing man table. Missing man tables are memorials set up in military uh, dining halls to honor dead, missing, or in prison service members are a full and are full of symbolic items and colors. This table is reserved to honor our missing comrades in arms, a frame statement that uh, accompanied Chick-fil-A's tables read. According to the National League of POW MIA families, here's what the items on the tables represent. And there's a picture of one right there. Boy, that is really something. The table is round to show our everlasting concern. The cloth is white, symbolizing the purity of their motives when answering the call to serve. The single red rose reminds us of the lives of these Americans and their loved ones and friends who keep the faith while seeking answers. The yellow ribbon symbolizes our continued uncertainty, hope for the return, and determination to account for them. A slice of lemon reminds us of their bitter fate captured or missing in a foreign land. A pinch of salt symbolizes the tears of our missing and their families. The lighted candle reflects our hope for their return. The Bible represents the strength gained through faith to sustain us and those lost from our country, found that as one nation under God. The glass is inverted to symbolize their inability to share a toast, and the chairs are empty. They are missing. And then there's a photograph of one of these tables, and it just, uh, it's, uh, it's really quite something. So, uh, banned from the Buffalo and the Niagara Airport, eh? Okay, fine, very good. Okay, this, now this comes under the heading, oh, I don't have a lot of time left, darn it. This comes under the heading of what? Politics makes pretty strange bedfellows, it said. How about Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, AOC, or an ordinary charterhead, and Senator Ted Cruz? Ted Cruz struck a deal on Twitter Thursday to work on an anti-lobbying bill to stop the infamous revolving door. What they're proposing is if you leave Congress, you can't just take up lobbying or policy influencing jobs. You have to wait a decent amount of time so you can't walk out of Congress and then get a job as a lobbyist. And they're actually on the same page with this. This is incredible. Ha! Ted Cruz! And Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. That's amazing. Absolutely amazing. Okay, fine. I guess, guess that's it for this show. And I will see you Monday at 8.05. Bye.